إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة all praise is due to Allah, we praise Him, we seek His aid and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evil consequences of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped. None has the right to our ultimate love and devotion, but our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, who has no partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. Indeed, the best speech are the words of Allah, and the best guidance is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And the worst thing in the religion are the newly invented matters. And all the newly invented matters in religion are considered to be innovation and bid'ah, and every bid'ah is misguidance and it leads to the hellfire. In the early stages of the history of the Muslim Ummah, there was a man living in Kufa and he was notorious for his misbehaviors. He was a troublemaker and in his youth he created so much trouble and he was addicted to alcohol. He would be the only one in his group, in his gang, in his clique that would drink alcohol in public because that was a Muslim land, it's prohibited, it's shame for someone to drink alcohol in public and show off. This guy was an exception. He had a rude character and he would openly in public in front of everyone hold the bottle and drink and get drunk. So this drunken guy at the time was notorious, made so much trouble, put so many people in difficult situations, made a lot of people uncomfortable, so he was notorious. He was known for that kind of behavior. So one day he's with some of his friends walking around and something captures his attention. He sees a huge number of people gathering around one person on his riding animal on his mount. So that grabs his attention. Why would all these people grand, you know, gather around one person? What's so special about this man? So he, want, he was curious, he wanted to see. He wanted to find out for himself. So he goes directly with his obnoxious, straightforward, rude manner and he approaches that man directly without asking anything and he stops him. When the guy was on his riding animal, he stops and he says, who are you? I want to know who you are. That, that was his style, that was his character, that was his approach. No greetings, no respect, nothing. In the middle of all of these people trying to have a conversation and speak with that man, uh, trying to ask him questions, this guy comes and abruptly breaks that kind of flow and he says to this guy, who are you? And who are these people? Why are they all gathered around you, trying to talk to you, strike a conversation with you? What's going on here? So one of the guys around, he says, You don't know this guy? This is Al-Imam Shu'bah. 
شعبة بن الحجاج He's a محدث He says شعبة بن الحجاج a محدث What does that even mean? What is, what's محدث? What does it mean محدث? I don't understand what that means. I don't understand your jargon, guys. What are these words? So they explain to him, they say, Muhaddith is a scholar of hadith. That means this person has dedicated his life to studying the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He would travel from one city to the other, from one country to the other, all around trying to collect the narrations from the Prophet ﷺ. The statements of the Prophet ﷺ. He wants to learn the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He wants to learn it, embody it, act upon it and teach it. That was his lifestyle, that was his dedication, that was his message in this life. So he dedicated his life for this kind of study. He's a muhaddith, that's what a muhaddith means. He says, okay, that makes sense to me. So then he addresses this scholar, Shu'b ibn al-Hajjaj, directly and he says to him, okay, if you are a scholar of hadith, you know, narrate hadith, then narrate one hadith for me. You can still see that kind of background showing on his attitude. So narrate the hadith to me now. Shu'bah ibn al-Hajjaj was a wise man. He reflected on the state of that man. He recognized where he comes from, what kind of background he has, what kind of character. So he wanted to give him something that might strike a chord with him, might hit a nerve and wake him up. So he contemplated the state of this man. And he said, okay. And he says, حَدَّثَنَا فُلَانٌ عَنْ فُلَانٌ He said, oh, it was narrated to me from, I heard so-and-so say this. He narrated it from so-and-so, from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he said, إِنَّ مِمَّا أَدْرَكَ النَّاسُ مِنْ كَلَامِ النُّبُوَّةِ الْأُولَى إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاصْنَعْ مَا شِئْتِ إِنَّ مِمَّا أَدْرَكَ النَّاسُ Oh, إِنَّ مِمَّا أَدْرَكَ النَّاسَ مِنْ كَلَامِ النُّبُوَّةِ الْأُولَى إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاصْنَعْ مَا شِئْتِ The meaning of the hadith says that from the old wisdom that was given to the prophets, the revelation that was given to previous prophets who were sent to previous nations and it's still, the statement is still alive today is that if you lack shyness and bashfulness and good character you're gonna do what you want you'll behave the way you wish there will be no restrictions, no limitations on you because you don't care, you simply don't care. You're gonna behave, you don't, you don't even care how you come across. You don't care if you violate other people. You don't care if you make other people uncomfortable. Because if you have no sense of shyness and bashfulness and decency, you're gonna behave in rude ways. You're gonna do what you wish and what your desires push you and drive you to do regardless of whether these things are ethical or unethical whether they are good or bad so that's a wisdom from previous messengers that was given to them by means of revelation but it still survived until that time so although this guy the drunken guy although he had this kind of negative background still he had some kind of wisdom some part in his heart, in his soul was still alive and it seems that the choice of Imam Shu'b ibn al-Hajjaj Hajjaj was very wise. So the man seems to have reflected on the words. He said, this, this, makes, this makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. If you don't have shyness, if you don't have decency, you're going to end up doing what you want. You don't care because you just simply don't care. He reflected upon his state, because he would drink in public, he would do nasty things in public, he would have no sense of shame, shameless, completely shameless. So that made him reflect upon his life. So he took these words to heart, he contemplated them, thought about them. Then somehow they woke him up. They woke him up and he asks around, he says, I want to change my life style. I want to become a better person. I don't want to live my life, the rest of my life like this. I don't want to waste my life in alcohol and trouble and mischief. I don't want to do this. I want to follow a different lifestyle. What should I do? So people said to him, why don't you travel to Medina? There's a great scholar there called Imam Malik. Why don't you go to Imam Malik and study with him and learn? He says, I want to become a muhaddith. I want to become like the man who inspired me, this Shu'bah ibn al-Hajjaj. 
This guy, his adab, his manners, his beautiful character, his demeanor inspired me. I want to be like him. They said, you need to go to Imam Malik in Medina. He can teach you the hadith. You can learn from him. You can learn from his beautiful character. That's the way for you. He gets himself ready. He goes to Medina, studies with Imam Malik for a number of years. And a few years later, he becomes a scholar of hadith. A scholar of hadith. And... This man is actually considered to be one of the main shuyukh of Imam al-Bukhari. So when you go to Sahih al-Bukhari, and you're going to check some of the narrations, you will find Imam al-Bukhari saying, Haddathana Muhammad ibn Maslama al-Qa'nabi. It's this guy. It's this man. He says, Haddathana, that means he's the shaykh of al-Bukhari. Al-Bukhari is saying, I was, this narration was given to me by Muhammad ibn Maslama al-Qa'nabi. It's my teacher. So he's the, he, became, he became the teacher, one of the main scholars of hadith. So later on, Imam al-Bukhari travels and he gathers hadith. He searches for him and he comes and he learns hadith from this man, Muhammad ibn Muslim al-Qa'nabi. And Imam Muslim as well does the same. So you will find the name of this guy in the narrations in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim and other collections of hadith. He's one of the main scholars of hadith of that time. Muhammad ibn Muslim al-Qa'nabi. Then later on in his life, he says... I want to be thankful, I want to be grateful to the man who changed my life, who inspired me. I want to go back to Al-Hajjaj, or to Shu'ba ibn Al-Hajjaj, and I want to go, I want to thank him. I want to let him know what that word did to me, how he inspired me. So he travels back to Iraq, or to Al-Basra, where, he, where Imam uh, Shu'ba ibn Al-Hajjaj lives. And when he arrives there, he receives the news that Imam Shu'ab ibn hajjaj had already passed away. He says, may Allah have mercy on the man that inspired me and changed my life. What is the point behind the story? That no matter what you do in your life, or what anyone else for that matter does in their life, you can always come back to Allah. You can always change your ways. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us evil. We were born in a state of purity and perfection. The Prophet ﷺ says, Kullu mawludin yuladu ala al -fitrah. Each child is born when they are born in a state of fitrah, purity. And the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, like Ibn Abbas says, Al-Fitrah is Al-Islam, the religion of Al-Islam itself that was given to Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, to Jesus, peace be upon him, to Moses, to David, to Solomon. To all these prophets, the prophet Ibrahim and Adam and Nuh and all of these great prophets, they were given the same message, submit to Allah, because that's human nature. That's how we are born. And the revelation was sent down to maintain this nature and to develop it and to nourish it and to make it unfold and express itself in a worldly fashion that we can see and feel and touch. So that means every one of us can change. No matter what you did in your life, you can always become a better person. Why? Because the seed of goodness is inside you. It's at your core. And when you see someone who's done so much evil and so much bad, don't ever lose hope in them. Don't ever give up on them. Goodness is in every human being. Who in their wildest dreams thought in the early stages Umar ibn Khattab would become a Muslim? When one of the early companions who migrated to Abyssinia to flee the torture and the, the persecution of Quraysh, one of the women there, Umm Abdullah, she was waiting for her husband. He went just to do something and he was coming back. So they set out on their journey to Abyssinia. Umar ibn Khattab was a non-Muslim at the time and he says, Ya Umm Abdullah, where are you going? Where are you guys going? Aina tadhabun ila ain? So she says, we, we are running away from you guys. You prevented us from practicing our religion, from being obedient to Allah. You persecuted us. You tortured us. We can't live among you anymore. We need freedom to worship our Lord alone. You made it hard for us. Amr al-Khattab got emotional. She sensed some kind of sympathy in his attitude. She couldn't believe it. When her husband came, she said, I saw something strange. I saw Umar al-Khattab, he came and he asked me, he said, where are you guys going? And I told him that we are running away. We are fleeing Mecca because we want to worship Allah, we want to be safe. We want our freedoms to be able to worship Allah. And I felt a change in his attitude and he said, 
كان الله معكم may Allah be with you he said may Allah preserve you that's Umar ibn Khattab so her husband and that's the point her husband says you seem to have hope that Umar ibn Khattab might change and become a Muslim she said yes he said wallahi قد يسلم حمار ابن الخطاب ولا يسلم عمر. He says the donkey, the riding animal of his father, might become a Muslim and change his mind, but not Umar. Umar will never do that. And who? Guess what happened? One of the main leaders in Islam, one of the best companions of the Prophet who influenced, had a, had such a great influence in the history of the Muslim Ummah. So don't give up on anyone, no matter who they are, and whatever happens. Don't ever give up. Don't give up on yourself. You had sins, you've done so much evil, you've wronged so much people. Still, still you can always come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Still you can always make a change and make a difference. You can always embrace your true nature and that is loving towards Allah. That is obedient towards Allah. That recognizes the way of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and realizes this is the only way to embrace my humanity. This is the only way to make it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be true and authentic. So this is a beautiful part of our religion that opens our eyes, that never give up on yourself. Never, never give up on any human being. As long as their hearts are beating, as long as there is breath coming in and going out, as long as they can open their eyes, as long as they wake up, as long as there's life in them, there's always an opportunity and a chance for change.